modern genetic engineering, you can use actually some online tools. Online tools to do genetic engineering and find out protocols and also uh, doing experiments. One important online uh, resource is NEB, Kakar, or NEB homepage, which you can use for your genetic and engineering uh, experiments. Moreover, at Z, at Z, this is another company site which you can use for solving problems as well as designing your designing your genetic engineering protocols and experiment designing experiments. As we have already discussed in the last semester means in this semester, the genetic engineering, if you want to summarize, they have certain aspects and we can summarize them into few points. Like in genetic engineering, you need to deal with the DNA, RNA or protein. DNA, RNA or protein, you have enzymes which can actually manipulate nucleic acid sequences. Nucleic acid sequences in terms of DNA and RNA. There are enzymes like polymerases, restriction enzymes, you have cas one nucleases, endonucleases, endonucleases, polymerases, ligases, all those uh, enzymes are actually used to deal with modification of your nucleic acids. Cleavage of DNA specific sites are restriction in them, which is one of the most important aspects whenever you start genetic engineering. DNA cloning is the next, either through the use of cloning vectors or the polymerase chain reaction, whereby a single DNA molecule can be copied to generate many billions of identical copies. As I told you, cloning and PCR both actually make copies. But the problem with PCR is that unless and until you put it into a vector, this amplified products are not stable. To make it stable, you need to put it into a host. And to put it into a host, you have to put it into a carrier, just like a truck, which will carry your raw materials from one place to another. That means one organism into another organism. So it also helps in transformation and making transgenics. Means if you want to modify genetically the whole cell, you have the option. So this is many practical applications. Nucleic acid hybridization is another aspect which makes it possible to find out specific sequences in a DNA or a RNA molecule. Southern block and northern block. Southern blood deals with a DNA probe and hybridizes with a DNA. In case of your northern, a RNA molecule hybridizes with a DNA probe. Now this probe is basically a sequence of DNA which is having a fluorescent dye or radioactive level molecule which actually can detect where it binds specifically. Where it binds specifically means there has to be complementary base pair. When there is complementary base pairing, that means there that sequence is there. So that's how you prove that our sequence of interest is there in the sample. How could go but what is the what is the main 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 funda behind hybridization? What you want to achieve by doing hybridization technique? Hybridization technique correctly. Now you want to locate or you want to verify presence of a 
particular sequence in a sample. Then you have hybridization techniques. And PCR can also do that in certain aspects. Fourth most important thing development in genetic engineering is the rapid sequencing of nucleic acids, which makes it possible to identify genes and to reduce, reduce the amino acid sequence of a protein. From the, from the DNA sequence, you can actually predict the protein sequence of a molecule, protein sequence of a gene, and by doing so, if you modify the DNA sequence, that means amino acid sequences can be modified, which is called as the protein engineering. You can design proteins on the basis of manipulating your gene sequence. That is pos made possible by genetic engineering techniques. Simultaneous monitoring of expression levels of each gene, just like your real time PCR microarrays have played certain roles in detecting COVID. During COVID, you can see real time PCR play a significant role in diagnostics as diagnostics. So, the from CT value we could say that how serious the infection is, how much infected the, the infected the person is, all we could whether that person is infected at all or not, all we could actually monitor using this technique. Simultaneous monitoring of expression level of certain genes which we did in case of your COVID screening. Some of the important inventions and developments in genetic engineering. And one of the most important aspect of manipulating DNA is use of certain restriction enzymes. These are some of the most commonly used restriction enzymes in genetic engineering. Uh, EcoR1, Indi3, PSQ1, these are some of the, you can see HPUR1 gives you a plant ended sequence. If you have to clone this sequence, then you have to use adapters or linkers. Or you can actually go for PCR also. In the PCR molecule itself, PCR amplified product itself, you can add restriction sites. DNA nucleo, DNA nucleotide sequence recognized by four widely used restriction endonucleases. These are some of the very important restriction enzymes. Now there is there is certain aspect where you can actually without putting linkers or suppose you have a vector digested like this and you have a sequence like this you can put T T T, T. And you can put A, 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 A here. Similarly, T, 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 and A, 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 A. By the enzyme called as terminal transponents. See you, sir. Now you can edit this, you can put it here because it will hybridize with this and it will hybridize with this. This sequence is the this sequence. Like this you can do non-dead cloning. How do you perform non-dead cloning? Plant and cloning. 
one option is your linkers and adapters linkers and adapters number 2 is your adding using using terminal transference terminal transference to generate sticky ends fine to generate sticky ends gene electrophoresis i told you one very important technique used in genetic engineering for qualitative and quantitative estimation purified dna molecules can be specifically labeled with radioactive enzymes see if purified dna polymerase enzyme labels all the nucleotides in a dna molecule and can thereby produce high do highly radioactive dna probes the simple simple concept here is labeling dna labeling dna is if you have a sequence if you have a polymerase enzyme a primer three prime hydroxyl group new sequences will be added using dntp if one of the dntp dntp means nucleotides dntps means what it's a mixture of four nucleotides four nucleotides they have triphosphates here bases here and a pentose sugar which gives you the hydroxyl group now because of this hydroxyl group the polymerase can put new molecules and because of this phosphate group they can make the phosphorylated the bond now giving phosphorylation bond if this the first phosphate is radio level or fluorescently level during phosphorylation bond these two will go out and this will get incorporated here sometimes like this that whenever the new synthesis occurs they will incorporate the ntps which are level by means so the newly synthesized molecule will be fluorescently level or or your radioactive level this is called as dna labeling now what is the application of dna labeling to design probes to design probes we need molecules which are labeled so dna labeling is useful for preparation of probes now how probes work how probes work suppose this is a dna molecule it has got a sequence a b c c e a like this and we have a probe we have a probe like p z c d d d t a like this now when we hybridize it will bind to this sequence
okay mm -hmm. so we can say that if if this is level level when we radioactivity detection auto radiograph we can see we will understand in the next slide how it is done we can say that this sequence is present in the genome if there is no hybridization this sequence has not found any thing to bind that means this sequence is this sequence is not present in the sample mm -hmm. this is how hybridization works this can be done both for dna as well as rna molecule rna molecule if we have any sequence complementary base pair dna can bind to rna so we can design probes with radio level or fluorescent level sequences dntps nucleotides and we can hybridize in high stringent condition to see whether a particular sequence is present in our sample or not this is the funda behind hybridization now one method of dna labeling is nick translation which is done suppose there is a dna molecule dna molecule we subject to s1 nucleus digestion what does s1 nucleus do they make they make single stranded breaks single stranded breaks they cannot make at the same time both the sequence they cannot cut so whenever there will be cut it will be single stranded now to seal this nick we can use polymerase polymerase along with label dntp means one of the nucleotides will be labeled with fluorescence or radioactive material now what happens in the next step next step when these gaps are sealed when these gaps are sealed they become radio level because the dnt is contain radio level or fluorescent level fine so this is one of the method for nick translation uh, dna dna level dna labeling can be done also by using pcr also by using pcr by pcr how it is possible you have double stranded dna you denature it separate the strand do a pcr when you do the pcr you may choose a particular gene specific primer which you want to check whether that sample is there in our sample or not so we will be designing something which is complementary to a target sequence so while doing the pcr you add radio level dntps so when the pcr is done up to a certain level so that must it will be radio level sequence so if we don't have one sided pcr it will be single stranded dna molecule and it will be labeled with fluorescence or radioactive material that is the two procedure by which normally we can go for labeling dna one is by polymerase activity and other is by polymerase and s1 nucleus activity 
and the other is by your PCR. That's how regulated DNA is made. Purified DNA molecules can be specifically labeled with radioisotopes or chemical markers. Same thing we have discussed here. When I give this presentation to you, you can go through. Nucleic acid hybridization actually can one example here. Suppose this is DNA probe and we want to monitor whether the sequences are there here or not. So what happens if the low stringency is there, means the binding is very tough, only specifically few sequences will bind the probe. If the condition is like liberal, not very stringent, stringent in the sense high temperature, high ionic interactions, low concentration, these are stringent condition. Stringent condition means there will not be enough of molecule to find out the sequence where it has to bind. Moreover, the buffer condition and environment will be such that it will be very difficult to bind, find out the complementary base pairing. This is called as stringent condition. Stringent. Mane harsh condition. Harsh condition of over it will bind only the specific probe. In less, less stringent condition, there is a chance that the sequence will bind to non-specific region with some hairpin loop. This is called as hairpin loop because this part is exactly not matching. What is the idea that probe should bind to a sequence in a hybridization reaction? Here is a probe. I am putting it directly like this. This is a probe. This is a DNA. We will denature them. We will denature them and allow this thing to bind. Two situations may come up. Two situations may come up like in one it binds like that means it doesn't match exactly the same sequence these have mismatches but there are similar matches also matching and mismatching both are there less stringent condition they are binding that means this probe has bind to the DNA non specifically means not exactly the specific mm. now there is we have increased the stringency by increasing the temperature or mm. reducing the concentration of probe and the probe then making it more violent putting it more higher so that the molecular movement becomes higher etc in that case this sequence has bind here perfectly that means without any hairpin loop mm. then this is called as the perfect hybridization this is not per perfect hybridization this is perfect hybridization so we have to optimize when we do hybridization ok now there are four different three different hybridization techniques one is sudden northern and western what happens in sudden cell hybridization the probe is a DNA molecule and it is getting hybridized to a DNA molecule. So how do you perform sudden blot? How do you perform sudden blot? The sample which where you want to check whether your probe is there or not, probe sequence is there or not, your interested sequence is there or not, you will isolate genomic DNA. Okay. Genomic DNA. 
you denature them denaturation then run a gel in denatured condition run a gel band should be there depending on different sizes these are dna this dna will be transferred to a nitrocellulose membrane by putting just like this yeah. Yeah. and after putting a nitrocellulose membrane here we will put these things into a chamber this chamber contains some buffer this is called as the mobile phase like your paper chromatography it will move towards up we will put the gel here gel here we will put the nitrocellulose membrane above it pulled up and we will always add something depending upon my wish to know the direction tomorrow we can let the right angle or right angle will be depends on whom to what we are coming and from the right angle will be now we have to know so we will put like this and we will put lots of lots of filter paper and a weight the weight will make it stable this is a membrane which is continuous to the gel 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 of color na gel kind of color this is deep in the buffer mm. now the capillary action mm. due to capillary action and the and the ionic interaction mm. this dna will move from the cell to the nitrocellulose membrane people may ask you how dna moves it's because of the capillary movement of the buffer a buffer to make up cellular usage of this buffer will push dna from the cell to the nitrocellulose membrane or not blotting paper dekha hoye bhai sir pani dile blotting paper aur pani ke liye usage hai same thing hoga ya the blotting paper kiya tha na filter paper tha blotting se hai na so this will go towards this is it correct yes sir is it clear yeah so the nitrocellulose membrane will have the same band although we cannot see them okay now this nitrocellulose membrane will be taken in a hybridization chamber hybridization chamber amar yate ase eta compound eta ene pa eta role thake eta bhuri thake buffer is there buffer ki thake ko probe thake buffer of probe thake ko probe is level probe is level and the membrane will be like this membrane will be like this where it will rotate and the probe will during rotation probe will find out its actual position after hybridization we will do the washing excess excess probe has to be washed out then we will see taking it in a fluorescent reader chemidog chemidog and again our gel dog as it we will see chemidog which can detect fluorescence from the fluorescence suppose dosta sample as it there come up juta sample of the band by so on baki neither nine that means these two sample have got our sequence but other samples doesn't have our sequence this is called as southern your southern lot hybridization understood yes sir semester thick tarah se tarah se padte na अब तक समझ में आ गया
बिकॉज एक दिन में कॉन्सेप्ट नहीं होता कॉन्सेप्ट एक दिन में नहीं बनता तो ये हम टू ड्राइव भी देखना यू हैव टू रीड टू फाइंड आउट वट इज द फंडा बिहार वाई 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 डी एन ए मूव फ्रॉम गियर टू गियर डी एन ए इज नेगेटिव पिक्चर्स एंड दिस नेचुरल विल बी पॉजिटिव पिक्चर्स so there is a attraction that attraction is pushed by the capillary activity this capillary activity is generated by this this is called as weak amar chinni weak thake na it is ki aapne mein sahi this is called as weak so q i c k w i c k that is a material which can actually transport water so solution upwards as a result this attracts buffer because these are dry and which can take up water there will be capillary action as well as the positive negative interaction between nitrogenous membrane and the dna so it will be getting transferred to nitrogenous membrane after membrane is transfer the bands will be fixed so first solution will be a fixer the dna has to be fixed in the membrane then the probe solution then the washing after washing you monitor the fluorescence so this is basically the steps in sudden block hybridization when it is northern block when it is northern block Just three things will change. You know, mRNA, ribosomal RNA has got secondary structures. They have internal bindings. Means the same molecular sequence can hybridize, even mRNA. So basically, these RNA molecules will have secondary structures in the cell. so we have to keep them in denatured condition okay so northern block is your probe is a dna level and your sequence yes. you are hybridizing is rna okay why we exploit this RNA DNA hybridization can take place because of the complementary base pairing between RNA and DNA. So what we do, we take same way sample, we isolate RNA. Suppose our aim is to get only hybridization with mRNA, so we can separate out all RNA and mRNA. mRNA pool. We will run a gel RNA. Then we will trans transfer it into same way. Gel nitrocellulose membrane. Blocking paper. Wait. Here RNA is getting transferred to nitrogen cell. Now this RNA, when we run the cell, when we go transferring, we have to put it in a denaturating condition. Denaturating condition is maintained by MOX, that is the buffer, or formamide.
it will form like this, isn't it? Because this neutron part doesn't have any complementary base pair here, so it will go like this, and we can use S1 nucleus to digest this part. We can find out this sequence to understand which part is the intron. You can cut this part and you can actually sequence it. Here you can see. Thank you. 